Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. Do you have one of these? Yes, this is a bank dongle. This particular one is an HSBC one. That's sort of used on the sort of various business accounts, or at least used to be before they went to the sort of more modern ones with the keypad. Um, I don't know whose it is, to be honest with you. I presume it was one of mine, but I, who knows? I'm just going to sort of go straight in. I think we should be tearing that down. I quite like that, that little uh, lanyard. That's groovy. I'll keep that aside. If there's anything that I keep at the end of this teardown, it will be that lanyard. Let's pop it open. I always wondered, though, like, you know, ow, 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 ow. So it's obviously a sort of random number generator. So every time you push the button, it generates a new code. And that was a sort of code you'd use to log in. And it's a little bit like Google Authenticator or whatever the equivalent is on Apple stuff. The idea being that the bank knows the predetermined sequence of code. So it knows it's you because you've just pressed the button and it's released a code. There's not really, not really a massive amount in here. So the first thing that's really struck me was that there's no sort of protection. So once if you open it up, it's fine. You can open it up and dig around and you probably dig around in the battery if you wanted to. Um, nobody could stop you. So what I've noticed, first things first, in the case, there's these holes. You see them right there. And if you pop that off before the stickers applied, clearly they can program these. So these would fit into a jig, which would push some pogo pins through there and actually program the PCB and set the sort of serial number and the code. And I suspect that's married up to that in the factory. So that's great. That's nice. There's a bit of uh, there's some numbers actually on it. It says ground, res, reset, out, reference, INR, INL. So yeah program a little microcontroller in there. There's a transistor here, probably just to do with when you actually push that button. That's probably what turns it on. That probably just kickstarts the whole thing. It's like a sort of reset -y sleep circuit. Everything's under a blob. There's also, they've covered, the sort of looks like the timing crystal with goop. I'm not sure why they've done that. So worried about that being tampered with. I don't think these are a sort of time sensitive device. But yeah, maybe that does affect how long the thing would stay on the screen. So four screws out. Serial number. It's a PD PBD 90S09KJ5 Rev 1.1. There is something underneath here. If I can get this dear off it g06 mainboard date otc 24 2009 um yes and because i've sort of been manhandling it i've ma managed to mess the led up because it's using that interesting sort of conductive strip that's nice and simple isn't it and that just pops on there it will work by magic Hooray! Kinda, kinda still works like magic. That's about it really, that's all she wrote. So there's your button contact, there's your screen, your blob with your processor, your timing crystal, just various bits and pieces here that are probably just to do with programming and to do with the wake up of the unit when you press the button. Just another quick look on the top, yeah. Battery. Should we see how much battery life is left in this? Because this would be quite interesting. Ah, hmm. I've also got an idea. Once we measure the battery, let's just pop it all back together and see if it goes mental. You know, like it knows the battery's been out and it just goes, nope, I'm not talking to you anymore. I know I've been interfered with. Battery life is down to 1.8 volts from a 3 volt cell. So this is pretty low. This would have been end of life. And they don't. Um, they don't sort of service these. I think they just told you to bin it and they'll send you a new one. Not that it matters too much with this one because they don't even use them anymore. So we'll just get that screen back in, sitting nicely. There we go. Come on, get in there. My screwdriver. Has lost all trace of magnetism. 
which is probably a good thing. I think, I think we'll just, ah, come on, we'll go for all the screws. I was just going to see, I'm probably going to throw it in the bin, to be honest with you, in the recycling. But as we're here, let's just put all the screws in to make sure that we've done all we can to make sure it would resume functioning had it been any other scenario. Right, so we're going to pop our battery in just about. Give me a code. Mm. <laughs> okay, there's all sorts of stuff coming up on the screen. That's weird. I'm trying to work out if it's just because we haven't got the screen in right or something. No doubt. But certainly it's doing some weird stuff, isn't it? It's like, I'll push the button. It looks like it's doing stuff every time I push the button there. Weird. So that's it. That's the HSBC dongle. Um, I think there's nothing left to do than get my drill of doom. No, doesn't work anymore. <laughs> It actually, oh, look at that, look at that. That's cool. It kind of popped the back of the PCB enough so that it broke. <gasps> I've never seen inside one of these. Not properly. This one's come off so cleanly. Look, that's the actual underneath the blob. And you can see the little PCB tracks going to that small metal layer. And then what you can't see is that. That's the actual bit of the chip and with the little tiny little tiny wires going to the actual bits of the tracking. Wow, isn't that crazy? Anyway, it's going in the recycle bin now. Please comment down below, click like and subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thank you for watching.